Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Here in this video, we are going to be going over everything you need to know in regards to AMC stock, the broader markets, and Powell coming tomorrow. Now, young Jay Powell could give us a dose of um, reality <laughs> that I don't think we have gotten in a long time. So I think we need to go over that. I think that's critically important to go over here in this video because Jerome Powell is coming tomorrow and the way the markets have behaved today uh, a lot of people are getting uh, sh a lot of the bears are getting shaken out of their positions a lot of the bulls are feeling a little too confident and I think well there's a good chance that things are not going to be that great tomorrow so I'm going to give you my expectation for Powell I don't know if you want to call it a rug pull I don't know if you want to call it uh, just a fall in the markets, whatever you want to call it. I think we're set up for a large correction event. And I think it starts with Powell. Could I be wrong? Obviously. If you're looking at the markets today, everyone's wrong. The bears are wrong. The bulls are wrong. Especially the bears are wrong. Okay. Uh, markets are very, very volatile. You're not set up in a good position now heading into tomorrow. If you are a bull, if you are bullish, you're set up in a very poor way after the day today. So we have a lot to get into in a very short amount of time. You know the deal. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. And let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. So AMC stock is down 2% today, even though the NASDAQ has recovered up basically a 1% drop. So 2000 is the second best performing index. You are up 0.47% at the time of recording this video. The NASDAQ is up a quarter of 1%. The NASDAQ is the loser today, is the underperformer. The S&P is up 0.39%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 0.76%. The VIX is down about 2% today. Now, apparently Wall Street optimism um, for stocks is at its highest level since early 2022, according to a Bank of America survey. Now, um, I do have to sign into this account, and uh, it says I can read the article. So. Now, this article says risk appetite among professional investors in March has hit its highest level in more than two years, according to Bank of America's closely watched fund manager survey. Sentiment among the 226 market pros who responded to the monthly gauge of finance... Uh, finance's top investors showed optimism at its highest level since January of 2022. The bank's measure of bullishness takes into account cash levels, allocations to stocks, and the outlook on the economy. It showed a reading of 4.6 on the month, of 0.3 points from February, and well off its nadir, nadir, uh hit a year ago when the implosion of several regional banks rocked Wall Street. Such surges in optimism can be contrarian indicators, meaning they often are good times to sell. However, Bank of America said average cash balances remain at 4.2% above the 4% threshold that would trigger a sell signal. The bank's bull and bear indicator is at 6.5, which is bullish, but not yet extremely bullish, said Michael Hartnett, Bank of America's chief investment strategist. So whether you're at the peak or close to the peak, I think those are the two parallels you can draw from this survey. This is the highest appetite of risk measured in the survey since November of 2020 as the markets were peaking. It says the level of respondents expecting a global recession in the next year hit its lowest level since February of 2022. A total of 85% expect either a soft landing or no landing for the economy, while just 11% see a hard landing down from 30% as recently as October of 2023. So people are very bullish on stocks. No recession. And that sets you up in a really bad spot heading into tomorrow's Fed meeting. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to try to give you guys the short version of the long version, okay? You can go in depth and be very uh, deep on this, okay? There's a lot of potential outcomes with the Fed as well. I think that's um, something we got to establish. The Fed may be status quo tomorrow. And status quo would be the Fed forecasting two to three rate cuts in the dot plot, nothing changing with the dot plot. The Fed basically saying the same things that they have said that, you know, we've made great progress on inflation. We got to stay attentive to inflation risk, to the upside, to the downside. Economy looks like it's doing well. We should be in a spot to be able to cut rates later in this year. That's status quo. 
Now, my expectation is the the summary of economic projections is going to get lowered from two to three rate cuts to one. Um, that's a bit problematic right there. Uh, not not the end of the world, but a bit problematic. The other problem is, I think, in the Fed press conference, Powell's going to make it clear that the Fed will raise rates again if they need to. If inflation continues to come in hot, Powell will say they are prepared to raise rates. That's a problem. Okay, that's where you get into the problem for stocks. I don't think the dot plot has much to do with, you know, how equities will trade. And again, I could be wrong here. Maybe Powell says nothing about needing to raise rates again or a, a possibility. Maybe he just continues to, you know, think inflation is going to fall again. But I don't think the Fed is in a very good position to, uh, you know, just assume inflation is going to continue to fall. You, you can't just assume inflation is going to continue to fall at this point after the last two months of two PCE reports, two CPI reports, two PPI reports that have came in super, super hot. You can't be under the assumption that inflation's over with, right? And that's the problem. And I think that's what gets you the downside in the markets likely coming tomorrow. Just, again, the reason why the markets have rallied is because why? Not seven rate cuts or five or four or one or two. It doesn't matter. That number doesn't matter. We were at seven rate cuts priced in the markets on December 28th. What happened? You went from pricing in seven rate cuts to pricing in three rate cuts. You you priced out 1% of cuts in 2024 out of our markets. That was priced in to start 2024. The NASDAQ continued to go higher. Didn't matter. Big tech continued to lead the way higher. Your small cap stocks, your interest rate sensitive stocks, like a Tesla, like a Fubo, like a SoFi, like an AMC, uh, just to name a few, they have really underperformed in 2024. They have had really bad starts to 2024, like really, really bad starts to 2024. But that doesn't move the broader markets. The narrative has been, we don't care if the Fed cuts two times, three times, or seven times. As long as the Fed is cutting because the economy is doing well, that's a good thing. But as long as we're not going to get another hike, the next move from the Fed is a cut. I'm saying if the Fed has to come out and say the next move could be a hike, that's a problem. That's where you get selling. That's where you get downside in our markets. And that's my expectation for tomorrow. Would I be surprised if, you know, Powell is status quo and just kicks the can down the line to the next meeting, waits for more data? Of course. But I think with two solid months of data in, the Fed's in a comfortable position to say, if inflation continues to rise, we will cut rates. You also have to consider this bubble that we have in our markets. Let's be honest. This is a bubble. And um, really just the other financial conditions that are super loose right now. The Fed has been raising rates, but you have crypto rising, credit spreads that are extremely tight. The uh, prospects of what everyone thinks is going to be a soft landing, among many other things. This has the Goldman Sachs Global Financial Conditions Index at the easiest policy, the easiest policy in a very long time, okay? Very, very, very long time. And I think that's a bit problematic, a bit problematic for the Fed. I mean, even if you look at the Chicago Fed National Financial Conditions Index, you're negative 50 basis points, which, I mean, in 2022 in September and uh, April, you were well a lot more restrictive well now you're 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 not that tight right you're you're not in a in a place that would really warrant um inflation to continue to fall you're not in a very conducive environment for a continued drop in inflation with again crypto stocks at all time highs um real estate all time highs credit spreads being narrow Everyone believes there's a soft landing coming. People are apparently spending money like they're drunk, as well as not just citizens and people, but also the government and other governments. I mean, th th that's a problem, okay? 
Nobody's working with the Fed. It's like the Fed is fighting crypto, markets, everyone else, and it's making their job harder. So I think the Fed probably wants to get the markets to fall at this point. I think that would be a welcome sign for the Fed or a welcome thing for the Fed to see. And maybe the Fed thinks that could help, um, you know, drive down some near term inflationary pressures as well. So just something to consider. Um, that's my expectation around Powell coming tomorrow. Now, with that in mind, with that in mind, baby, that means some downside. OK, good opportunity to potentially hedge portfolios. But that likely means AMC stock falls as well. AMC stock is down 2.16 percent. It seems like a lot of your interest rate sensitive names, Fubo, SoFi, AMC, Tesla, your really sensitive names to interest rates. They're they're not going up today. Right. Your broader indexes are going up because your big tech names are going up. So that's not that's not fantastic. OK, uh, definitely could be better. But it's not because, I mean, if you're really bullish on Powell tomorrow, you would want to see interest rate sensitive names outperforming today. And I don't think this move that we're seeing today really sets you up in an optimal position for tomorrow. Now, AMC stock, like I said, is down about 2%. You did find resistance at that 50-day moving average. That is the level to be watching for. If for whatever reason, Powell is super dovish tomorrow and surprises to the dovish side, then if we get above that 50-day moving average, well, you could be in for a 35% run to that 100-day moving average, which is sitting at $5.96 per share. The level to be watching for that 50-day moving average is at $4.41 per share. If you get above that, that would be fantastic. But that's not my expectation. If it happens, great. But I don't think it's very likely. If we look at sentiment over here on Stock Twits, we go ahead and refresh this page to have the most up-to-date numbers. People are bullish, bullish today in AMC uh, with a reading of 59 and uh, yesterday, you were neutral with a reading of 50. So that's definitely better than yesterday. Message volume is higher than yesterday as well. Yesterday, you were low at 43. Today, you're normal at 49. And the participation ratio today is at 55, which is uh, pretty much in line with what you have seen recently. Now, if you take a look at the Ortex data today, you do have short interest percentage of free float at 13.26%, which is the highest point you have been at in a very long time. But, uh, you know, just still not that high. I think everyone's under the same assumption as, as me. Let's be honest. Short interest is a lot higher than what we're currently seeing here on Ortex. But the higher this Ortex number gets, the better off things will be. Right. You also have one hundred fifty three million dollars currently in short positions. Days to cover of two point three, uh, thirty four point seven eight million shares currently sold short with shares out on loan at forty six point eight two million. Cost to borrow one point zero eight percent, sixty three point one percent utilization and sixty seven point nine seven out of one hundred for your short score. These kids are ridiculous, man. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's kind of just what the situation looks like for AMC. Not a whole lot is changing. Things are getting better, but they're still not fantastic, right? Now, if you take a look at the option activity today, you do have volume to the call side of 66.9%, volume to the put side of 33.1%, and uh, hedge fund institutional option activity, 100% positive order value, one order totaling $11,000. Um, so we'll see where things hash out here in the last couple of minutes of the trading day. We did just have a bond auction come out that shot up TLT and shot up the markets. So that makes things interesting heading into tomorrow. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.